You're listening to the Never Heard of It podcast, a Night Shift Radio original. Every week we bring you the good, the bad, the weird, and lesser known streaming movies. Hit subscribe for new episodes every Thursday and Sunday. So, okay. So, you know this. Um, but since I, you know, since I moved into Baltimore recently and put me back, you know, in the East Coast megalopolis and the, it feels like the world is at my fingertips. Uh, and I am between jobs at the moment waiting to start a new one, uh, but cut my ties with the old. And so I've got just a bunch of free time. Uh, it's been great. I've been, I've been watching uh, shitty horror documentaries on Tubi. Uh, I've been reading a lot, just spending a ton of time on my my balcony. Like it's it's really it's wonderful. But um, a few days ago, we decided to to take a train ride down to DC, uh, which was neat, like an hour long, and then we're just right there, just wandering around. And I've never I've never gone just to see the city of DC. I've only ever been to like the government shit, like the tourist yeah, the attractions, the museums, school. yeah, stuff like that, or like you know. A dinner cruise on the Potomac in eighth grade. Uh, you know, vivid memories of that. <clears throat> so this time we we wandered to bookstores and coffee shops and yarn stores, things like that. Just you know, just had a really pleasant day. And I ended up picking up a graphic novel uh, that just looked really interesting. And then as I sat down to read it on the train, uh, just absolutely fell in love with it. And you may or may not be familiar. It's called Nimona. Um, oh. I have heard of Indy Stevenson, uh, yeah. and it started as a web comic. And it's one of the things I, I really love is that like it's not a dramatic shift, but like be, because it was a web comic, you can see as you read through the progress, the uh, the I read through it, the the progression of the art, how it like moves and changes and improves over time. And I love that. Like I I love binging a web comic because trying to keep up with one on uh, a daily or weekly or biweekly or whatever basis is like it's tedious. It's just, it's just tedious is what it it's is. It's what hung me up about uh, traditional comics as yeah. well. Of yeah. Being like, oh shit, I got to go to the store I've and i got to subscribe and I've got to wait yep. versus like you grab a trade paper or like a, a hardcover collection and then you can just read a story. I love that. Yep. Uh, read through the whole thing. It's a delightful story. A young girl who can shapeshift uh, throws in with a... Uh, a, a local villain who was kind of a disgraced former hero against this institute of heroes who are you know more de- nefarious than things seem at first. Delightful adventure story. Uh, Indy Stevenson, uh, a trans author, um, and I, I you know, really resonated with that. Also, I love that they they go by uh, ND. Uh, or Indy, um, yeah. which is just a, a fun nickname, uh, but also co-creator of the Lumberjanes, which was another uh, oh yeah big big series. Um, I haven't read much, if any, of Lumberjanes themselves, uh, but I read the, uh, the Lumberjanes and Gotham Academy crossover a while back. That was fun, uh, and. Uh, Nimona is supposedly going to find its way either as a series or a film to the streamers. Uh, now, I, I believe when I first read that, that it was supposed to go to HBO Max, but has been in, in limbo since 2020. Um, doing a quick search for the book led me to a uh, hint that it maybe is supposed to be a Netflix film. And I don't know if that's true or not. You have Netflix and might be able to, to valid, validate oh, that at some point. Uh, yeah, I, I, the trailer is out for that. Oh, well, that's exciting. Um, yeah, I, that's the one I think I just saw. I just saw a trailer. They just released the trailer for it not that long ago, and it's really cool looking. Well, then, if that's true, if it comes out on Netflix, we should definitely watch and review it because uh, I read the graphic novel essentially in one sitting. Um, you know, I, I got a little start on the train, but then when I got home, I just sat here in my office and just read the rest of it. And it's, uh, it's June 30th fun. on Netflix. There you go. Perfect. It comes out uh, this month. So, uh, perhaps, uh, in a future episode, we'll be talking about the, uh, the new Netflix, uh, film Nimona. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that sounds really cool. The trailer looks really awesome. I'm excited for it. Yeah. Speak, speaking of Netflix, uh, I watched a brand new show on Netflix uh, just recently. Um, and uh, this show, I, I've got like a a sentimental thing to it. I, I don't know what it is, but I'm like, this. it feels comfortable. Okay. And the show is FUBAR starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. What? And it's, uh, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger's first TV show ever. Uh, and the thing is, is he he is basically playing his character from True Lies. Okay. He is a CIA agent. 
you know, he's, he's on the verge of retirement, uh, you know, as, as he's like 70 years old, but like, he's on the verge of retirement. Uh, he's, you know, uh, and this isn't a spoiler because this is the plot of the show. Like this is in the trailer. This is in the description and everything. Yeah. Uh, so basically what, it, you know, he, he's, uh, on the verge of retirement. None, no one in his family knows he was a CIA agent. Everyone thinks that he owned a uh, fitness supply company, which explains why he's Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Like why he's like a gigantic Jack dude. Okay. Um, and what he finds out on his last mission is that his daughter is also a CIA agent. No. And neither of them knew this. So they find out that they're both CIA agents. And of course there's hilarity and action ensues. But what I really like about this movie is that, you know, you you get the setup of like, he's a very loving father. He's a very loving grandfather to to not her, not to his daughter's kid, but to his uh, his son's kid. Okay. Um, but like you see, he's a very family man, but he's, you know, divorced from his wife for like 13 years now. And, you know, he she specifically blames it on his job because he was always being sent away and he was never home and he was never there. And he knows this and he's desperately trying to win his wife back um, because he still loves her and he wants to be back in the family but he thought he was a really good dad but then when he learns that the daughter you know and the daughter and him get along and they have this special like oh we're doing our uh, daddy daughter bake-offs we're gonna do that and then he sees her and she's like beating the shit out of someone and he's like and she's swearing and she's drinking and smoking and he's like what the fuck? And she's like, <laughs> what the fuck are you here? And he's like, I'm fucking CIA and I'm here to tell this mission. She's like, no, I'm fucking CIA and I'm on this mission. And they just clash. And he's like, what are you doing drinking and smoking and swearing? That's not my little girl. And she's like, well, dad, that is your little girl. But like, I, I can't do that in front of you. So there's like this really cool family dynamic and like you know all the characters are really great um you know uh fortune femster uh is in this movie yes. there is in this tv series she's fucking hilarious um you know gabrielle luna is in it he's great in it uh the daughter is played by monica barbero uh and there's also milan carter uh he's in this and it's just what's great is that it is it feels very much like true lies there's a lot of jokes there's some good action but it still kind of like falls in line with jokey joke mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you've got the cool cia spy stuff going on you know now the the wife's in it, you know she still doesn't know that either of them uh, either of them are cia agents but now she starts to get suspicious because they keep having to go away on trips at the same time uh, i'm most i'm almost done with the series uh with the season and I fucking love it. I think it's a really great. Arnold's really funny in it, uh, just because he's he's just like very disillusioned to how we thought like his family, you know, how we thought his daughter was. He thought she was this perfect angel, and I, you know, I will admit there's a little bit of misogyny and uh, patriarchy with sure. how he acts, but it's really more about him breaking like it almost feels like it's it's breaking the misogyny out of him yeah realizing that his world that the world isn't the way he always thought it was yeah um so there is this, sort of that element of it because there is a few lines where i'm like oh e yeah arnold e yikes dude you know but then like a follow-up happens where you're like oh he's 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 unlearning he's unlearning the things that he had so like it makes sense for how it, you know, it feels good the way it kind of goes through and the way he unlearns kind of these bad things. Um, I, I cannot recommend the show enough. It's so funny. It's, uh, it's just a really good time. It's just a really good time. Yeah. And like, I know it didn't necessarily start with Van Damme, but I love this, like the, this recent, uh, phenomenon of these like washed up old action stars or, you know, maybe not necessarily washed up, but like nearing the end of their career, definitely past prime past like peak action star, but still acting, uh, doing more like fun comedic roles or like spoofs of their own lives, things like that. I'm thinking like Jean-Claude Van Johnson that we talked about a, you know, a few yeah. years back. Uh, and now this, and like, I think there's a couple other examples that are you know drawing the blank on, but I love that because the, the whole idea, like, they, like they're still hanging on, but, it's it's obviously not the same, and it's not going to be the same, and we're not trying to be the same. Uh, it's just it's fun, it's lighthearted. Uh, that sounds like an interesting show. It is, and actually, there's a cameo by Tom Arnold in it, who was in True Lies, <laughs> excellent uh, with with Arnold uh, back then. So yeah, Tom Arnold makes a cameo, and it's just 
it's just perfect. Like it's just, it just flows so well. I really enjoyed it. Excellent. Excellent. Well, um, we, by we, I mean, in my household, uh, okay. I was like, we didn't do shit. You need to watch your mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Keep my name out of your mouth. Uh, we here in my household, uh, recently wrapped on the third and I don't know if perhaps final or maybe we're just, there's no fourth season yet announced or what, uh, but the third season of the great, which, Oh, well the third season just, just came out like a day just, ago or something. It just yeah. dropped like a, a, maybe, maybe a couple weeks ago. I know it was, oh, yeah. it was very, very recent. Oh, I can see 12th May, uh, is yeah. when it dropped. Uh, so yeah, that was a couple weeks ago. Um, just a delight. I, I I love this show. We've we've talked about it before, so I don't need to go into any length. This third season is uh, is really particularly fantastic because you're finally starting to see Catherine become Catherine the Great. Uh, and I don't want to give any spoilers because I want people who haven't seen this show to watch it. it is like most of the time, the historical dramas don't do it for me because they try to be like period dramas. And try to be serious, but they just go too far with taking liberties on the story. So, like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Or, like, it just, like, makes something that was, you know, completely benign seem much more, like, interesting and uh, um, impactful than it actually was. And vice versa. Uh, The Great does all that, but they do it, like, right out in the open. I mean, the tagline of the show is an occasionally true story. And that holds true. Like, there's very little that's actually true uh, about this show other than some of the characters were real people. Uh, but I love seeing the the progression of Catherine in, you know, coming into her own and, own. and we really, really see that in this season. Uh, and of course, the, the on-screen chemistry between Elle Fanning and Nicholas Holt is just magical. Uh, t- the the character of Peter the Third would be entirely unlikable were it not for him, the absolute brilliance of Nicholas Holt, and we 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 talked recently about about Renfield and about other stuff that he's been in. He went from being someone that I was aware of and thought like yeah he's okay to like easily becoming one of my favorite actors in a very short period of time just from seeing the, the range that he has. Uh, and I told you before we started uh, recording that. I would have a, a very, very loose, very tenuous tie-in uh, to our theme of episodes for the month. Uh, and he's it because, of course, he was in the the movie Warm Bodies, uh, which uh, I'm ashamed to admit I still haven't seen. And I almost suggested that we cover this month because this month, the month of June, we're, uh, we're coming out of our chill vibes apocalypse and we're going full apocalypse. Uh, we're bringing it back with zombie movies, but with a twist this time. We've picked, well, I've picked, I'm going to own up to my mistakes. I have picked four zombie movies, all as as of time of uh, choosing uh, and as of this recording, all streaming for free on Tubi TV. Uh, I've picked four zombie movies and put forth the challenge. We have to pick at the end of the month, which one was the actual fucking worst? Uh, If that gives you any idea of what kind of quality content you're in for this month. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. So we're, we're starting right off with a movie called Strain 100. So if you're the type of movie uh, person that watches movies before we review them, Strain 100 is currently streaming on Tubi TV as of time of recording this episode. You can go ahead and give it a watch and then join us on the journey. But yeah, so, I mean, it seems like from the titles of these films, and I, I, just, I just inputted the descriptions into our calendar for our social media manager to like start prepping uh, mm-hmm. things for them. I, uh, just based on the descriptions alone, there's one of them that could be really cool if done right, it. but I I know they didn't. I doubt uh, it. And then the other three are definitely like definitely bad. So I'm really excited for for this month just to see like just how much of a shit show this is really going to be because I think that's what that what makes this journey super fun. Like I didn't go out of my way to find bad movies. I didn't have to. <laughs> they <laughs> they found me. <laughs> that's uh fantastic yeah mm-hmm. so exciting month coming up for this one i'm very excited for you guys to join us uh for this this journey of bad zombie movies yay and we're gonna do our our top big four brackets just like they would in the in the, <laughs> the final four games uh basketball yeah yeah so that's uh, we, basketball actually 
we're, you know, we're deciding this on the fly. We should we should actually do it. Like we're first two, first two weeks uh, have a face off, the last two weeks have a face off, and then we have a a final uh, loser at the end. We'll get we'll get brackets made. I'll have them make brackets for us. <laughs> uh, we uh, okay. Thought okay. we do this. We do this a few times, not necessarily back to back, because I don't think I could take it. Uh, but we do a few like monthly challenges like this, and then like at the end, like when we've acquired at least we'll say like four to eight of them, then we bracket them against each other. <sighs> Oh, I like this. Look at this. Y- y'all are hearing the behind the scenes magic right now. This well, is a peek behind the curtain. Little uh an Hoyt uh worst of all time. Uh yes. a woat, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> woat. Uh, uh stop woat. Um <laughs> anti woat. Uh, where woat goes to die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's spectacular. Uh, yeah, so, so that's coming at you. Uh, the best way to get notified about that is subscribe. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to this because we have brand new episodes every Thursday, but we definitely recommend heading over to our podcast channel and subscribing there because we have, uh, episodes every Thursday and Sunday. Sunday is our movie review episodes and those are just podcast only. They're mm-hmm. not, uh, on YouTube. So that's definitely the way you want to be able to listen to all of our content just hit that subscribe. And while you're there on whatever podcast player of choice or YouTube player of choice, um, go ahead and, you know, hit like, drop a star, you know, leave a rating and review, comment, whatever it is, because it's super helpful for us. It gets uh, us out to other people so our channel can grow and uh, we can continue to, you know, probably not have ads on our show anyways. But <laughs> And then you bite and infect at least two of your friends and they bite and infect at least two of their friends. And soon, uh, you know, we get an actual apocalypse. And we have a five-star rating via zombie spread. That's, you know, don't stop the spread is what we're saying. (laughs) The ratings apocalypse. Yeah. (laughs) All right, everyone. Uh, Thanks a lot for joining us. We super appreciate it. And we will see you on Sunday.